Okay, today's topic is something that I would consider intermediate. Now, some advanced students still get it wrong. I mean, we always get something wrong. I mean, I've been speaking English for 20 years, I still get things wrong. So, but I think that the D, DA thing is a little uh, bit of an intermediate issue, meaning everybody has it, but as a beginner, you don't really want to care too much about it. But as, a, as an intermediate student, you want to start getting it right. Okay, PJ says, on YouTube you can click live to move forward. Okay, so if you're watching this and you realize that it's not quite live, but I am live, then click on the live button. I don't know, but thank you, PJ. All right, let me take you to my notes and we start. And I will be asking you questions throughout the lesson. I will be asking you to translate stuff and I will be asking you to come up with examples. So, today we're talking about the and the, obviously. And I have a million slides, so I'll try and keep it a bit shorter than yesterday. Uh, last, a few hours ago, we did another lesson on... Uh, so tired, what did I do? Anybody was there? What did I do last, no, a few, like 10 hours ago? I did something, I did a lesson on something. <laughs> Oh, well, anyway, look it up, it's yesterday's video. <laughs> so today is the end up, and it is a detailed lesson, so it will clear a lot of doubts. If I give you too much information, that's my approach. One is, I believe in your brain, brain's ability to remember things when it hears them a lot of times. So you will hear myself repeat. You will hear me repeat a lot in my lessons, in my videos. My videos are not two minutes long because while it's quick and easy to watch, you're not going to remember anything. Gender. Yes, we talked about gender, uh, grammatical gender. Grazie mille, Mesh Pereira. Allora. So, and I'm going to give you a lot of examples. M many of them are very fine-tuning details that you don't really want to care too much. I'm going to show you to show you the flexibility of the and that, but you want to stick to the basics and then you know as you progress with your level you can come back to the video and watch the other things. So let's start from the basic idea. The kind of translates the idea of, of and that translates the idea of from. So that's the basic idea that you want to use the and that for. So the of and that from. So if you're thinking something like uh, this t-shirt comes from Bangladesh, then you will have to use da because it comes from Bangladesh. If you are saying uh, this is a book of prophecies, <laughs> then you're going to say D. So that's the idea and get this one right, okay? But let's start with D. D usually expresses possession. So that's the basic idea of D, that it expresses possession. But there's a little problem for English speakers because in English you have the apostrophe S idea, so you can say Federica's book. In Italian, that construction doesn't exist and it doesn't work. If I say Federica Libro, nobody understands what you're saying. So you have to always remember to kind of, I say, unroll your concept. So while in English it's Federica's book, you know that it's not possible, so it's going to have to be the book of Federica's or the book of Federica. That's the biggest problem English speakers have with Italian. You forget that you can't use the apostrophe S trick. So, I'm going to have a few examples, and if you want to translate them, please do. I'll try not to translate all of them. But. So, Il Libro di Federica, the book of Federica, and means that the book belongs to Federica. Now, here's another example of D. D is used to specify what something is made of, but it's the same as English. So the first example is a little different because in, in English we'd say Federica's book, but if I tell you that it's not possible, you're going to have to say the book of my friend. I know it doesn't sound like good English, but that's the only way you'd be able to say that in English if I told you that you can't use the apostrophe S. So, but this is a different example. This one, it means that the jumper, il maglione, is made out of wood. So, but in English we'd say two ways. We can say a wool jumper, or woolen jumper, or we can say a jumper made of wood, or wool. So the idea of, of 
already exists in English. So don't confuse this because it's the same concept as English of. Most of these examples, even though they look different and they translate differently, as you'll see them, many of them still go back to the meaning of of and oftentimes to the meaning of from. So don't worry too much. Ciao a tutti. Come state? Are you following? So there's 59 students watching this live and around 150 watching it late. <laughs> wow. Okay. Un uovo di cioccolato. Un uovo di cioccolato. So what, what is this in English? I'll try and wait for somebody to type it. I know there's a delay, but hopefully it's only 10 seconds. So, un uovo di cioccolato. So, uovo means egg and cioccolato means chocolate. So, in English, this would be... Is a problem. A chocolate egg, esatto. Bravi. Aiden, Joy, uh, Joanne. What's the difference here? Now, before with Federica's book, we had to use the apostrophe S, but that's because Federica is a person. But here, the egg is not a person, so we can just say a chocolate egg. You can't do this in Italian either. That's another big mistake that English speakers will make. In English is so more flexible than Italian. It's not even funny. Like Italian is very literal. You can't say things that don't, they don't mean the actual thing. So, in English, you say a chocolate egg. But what's the problem here? For Italian. Chocolate is a noun and egg is a noun. But you're using chocolate now as an adjective of egg. In Italian you cannot do that. You cannot put two nouns one after the other and use one as the adjective of the other. So in Italian you cannot say un uovo cioccolata or un cioccolata uovo, whatever <coughs> direction. Excuse me. <coughs> you can't do that in Italian. So you have to do what? You have to unwrap it. You have to unroll it again. So it's an egg of chocolate. But again, once you remember that you can't do that, you're going to go back to of because of is what makes sense in English. So it's not that different from English, which is good. So un uovo di cioccolato, it's an egg made of chocolate. I'm going to speed up person. Un pacco di due chili. Now here D is specifying the it's still another feature of the thing that we're describing, but here we're talking about measures. So D is used for measures. But who cares? Because in English it's, okay, option one, a two kilo parcel. But we can't do that in Italian. You can't have two nouns together. So it's a parcel of two kilos. So it works again. So don't worry too much as long as you remember what not to do. Uh, Ashley, I'm going to bring up your question because it's very interesting. This is confusing with ice cream flavors which use al cioccolato. Now, in Italian, when we talk about flavors, we don't use the D preposition because it's not an ice cream made of chocolate because there's a bunch of other ingredients in ice cream. So for flavors, we're going to use al or a plus the article. For example, we're going to say un panino al formaggio. Because it's not a sandwich made of cheese, it's a sandwich with many flavors and the main flavor is cheese. So for flavors we're not going to use D because it's, the sandwich is not made of cheese or the ice cream is not made of chocolate. So we're going to resort to the other preposition that works for flavors, which is A. Great question. So let's go back to the parcel. So it is a two kilo parcel, but we can't say that in Italian because there's two nouns together, so we have to say it's a parcel of two kilos. Un amico di Berlino. Here's another very common usage of di, and it's the origin of something. So that's a friend of Berlino. Now here, in English, we might say it's a friend from Berlino. But what we're trying, uh, we're actually literally saying here, is a Berlino friend. Oh, Berlin, sorry. So we are using Berlin as an adjective of this person. So, like in English, you could say a Berlin friend, which you wouldn't say, but that's what we're doing. So he's a friend whose origin is of Berlin. So that's why it's a little bit tricky.
But if I want to say a friend from Berlin, I would say un amico da Berlino. But the difference between un amico da Berlino and un amico di Berlino, what is it? In what I'm saying. Un amico da Berlino, I'm, sp I'm stressing that he comes from Berlino. When I say un amico di Berlino, I'm using the fact that he's from Berlin as an adjective of him. It's like saying a German friend. Un amico di Berlino. Perfetto. This one is something that you don't... You could actually say that in English. It's the Isle of Capri. Or Capri, as you say in English. L'isola di Capri. So, di is used often in these kind of things. For example, we say la città di Roma, the city of Rome. But again, it matches English, so we wouldn't worry too much about it. Un libro di cucina. Here's another usage of di. The topic. So in English you say a book, about, uh, a book about cooking or on cooking. Well, in Italian, we are going to use di for this purpose. So, è un libro di cucina would be the same, è un libro di poesia. In English you could say it's a book of poems. You wouldn't say it's a book of cooking. But it's the same structure in Italian. Ben. I'm rushing through the slides because there's quite a few and I want to get to talking to you. Carta di identità. I'll let you translate it and I'll move on. If you know what carta di identità is, it's basically a phrase that we use. It, it talks about some form of ID and that's what it's called. It's carta di identità. Now, here's another very important usage of D. It's used in comparisons. So, io, no, sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, let's say, Maria, uh, Marco, è più saggio di me. Marco è più saggio di me. Marco is wiser than me. So, in English, it's than, T-H-A-N, but in Italian, it's D. Here, it doesn't work like English, because in English, you wouldn't say he's wiser of me. So you have to remember that D is what you need to use for comparisons. It's different from English. ID card, you're getting it right. But then... Ooh, I think I turned it off. Okay. Then there's a bunch of phrases that use D and you just don't need to analyze them. But for example, this one is andare di fretta, to be in a hurry. O andare di corsa. So if you're late and you're in a hurry, you're going to use this expression and the D doesn't make sense. D is used for time reference when you do something on a specific day or, for example, in a specific season. So we're going to say di mattina when you do something in the morning. So here it doesn't work like English. Di mattina, it's in the morning. Di domenica, on Sunday. Di inverno, or di inverno, in winter. So, that's when it gets confusing for you guys, because in English you're going to use in, in most cases. In Italian it's still di. So, before days of the week, before... Not months. That's tricky. Um, what we say? We say a before months, so a marzo, or in marzo. But, uh, so, di mattina, di pomeriggio, di sera, and then the seasons, the days of the week, you have to use di. Okay? Wow, so much. Another usage that is different from English for di is as a partitivo. Now, you have this in French, for example, when you use the preposition di with the article to actually mean some. So, while you're reading bevo del succo, that del does not mean of the. It doesn't mean I'm drinking of the juice. That del is the Italian way of saying some. And that's a very tricky topic, which I'm not going to cover here. We can do another lesson on this, but it's our way of saying some. So, bevo del succo means I'm drinking some juice. Mangio della pizza, I'm eating some pizza. So, this is something that you have to remember because it's not the same as English. Finally, it's not really finally, I have a big one coming. D is used with place reference. So most of the expressions that you might know to describe proximity of things or location use D. 
uh, a destra di a destra di Marco c'è il frigorifero to the left of Marco ok so that's the idea invece di instead of so these are a bunch of expressions that just use di sometimes it works the same as English sometimes it doesn't you have to remember that it uses di in Italian now the one thing that I haven't put in my slides it's when the just doesn't follow any rule in Italian or in English and then you get lost. This is because it's the D that comes be between two verbs. But that D is only chosen based on what the verb wants. So for example, finire, whenever you finish to do something in Italian, the preposition is D. No reason, you can't change it, it's finire di mangiare, finish eating. It's the same as English with other things. For example, like in English, you may have to depend on somebody. That on, couldn't it be of, couldn't it be in? It's just on. That's because the English chose on for to depend. Listen, you listen to something. Couldn't you listen at something? Yes, but you don't say that. So that's, that's the hardest one because it doesn't make sense. There is no explanation. The only way to get it right is that you go and learn the verb and see what preposition that verb uses. So, that's why it's not in the slides. Benissimo. Allora, any questions about D? Because I'm actually moving on to DA and see, explore when to use DA. I hope this was helpful for you to understand all the possible usages of D. Yeah, Martin, ha tempo di prendere un caffè. Avere tempo di prendere, that's a phrase, to have time to do something. That's because the expression to have time wants di. And there's nothing we can do about it to understand it because I don't understand it either. El Sassi, cerco di capire bene questa lezione. Perfetto, cerco di capire. Why is it di? That's because cercare uses di. No other reason. These ones will drive you crazy because nobody can explain them to you. Not even mom. All right, let's have a look at da. So like I said, da means from, and literally you can use it any time you want to say from. So da Roma a Milano, from Rome to Milan. Easy one, okay? It's often used to say where you're from. If you use the verb venire, like in English you can say I come from Rome or Nettuno, my hometown. In Italian, I would say vengo da Nettuno. I come from Nettuno. This is confusing sometimes, mostly for beginners, because then you say, but I say sono di Nettuno. Yes, I am a citizen of Nettuno. I am a native of Nettuno. That's when we use the verb essere, we use di. But if you use venire, you come from a place. Now, here's the biggest introduction for you guys. I think this one is a big one because it's not often explained. Da is what we use in Italian to mean by when we are talking about introducing the agent, meaning what, what the, the person, usually, that is doing something. So, una legge approvata dal governo. It's a law approved by the government. So we're going to use da to mean by, whoever is performing the action. That's a tricky one because I see that often you don't get it right, it's tricky. Here's another example that can help you remember this. Un libro scritto da Pirandello. A book written by Pirandello. Bene. Uh, El Sassi, la luce di sole o la luce del sole? Well, oftentimes D merges with the article because it's the light of the sun, it's not the light of sun. So it actually it works the same as English when you go to the basics of kind of like breaking English, because in English you'd say sunlight. But sun is a noun and light is not, is a noun, you can't do that in Italian. So you were close with your guess, but you were right with la luce del sole. Let's go back to da. È svenuto dalla paura. Here's another tricky one that doesn't quite work. 
governo e yes means government. Marco è svenuto dalla paura. Marco fainted from fear. Oh, because of fear. Can you say he fainted from fear? I'm not very sure. I only slept three hours. How, how would I know? So can you say he fainted from the fear that he felt or that he had? I don't know. But that's what we say in Italian. Somebody faints from fear. Somebody is tired from working too much. Sono stanco dal lavoro. Sono stanco dal troppo lavoro. So we say da. Non dormo dalla gioia. I can't sleep because of happiness. So, that da usually replaces a phrase. And that's a really tricky one. That's why da is a lot more challenging than di. Because as you saw, the di pretty much goes back to of most of the time. Non dormo dalla gioia. Uh, I can't sleep because of happiness or due to the fact that I'm really happy. Um, some, I'm sorry, good question. Uh, where is it? I lost it, but yes, uh, Jane. Da is also used to mean since. Studio italiano da tre anni. I've been studying Italian since three years. Yes, it's actually not in my slides. Well done. Now, da is used when, in the example, can you translate this one? Uscire dalla macchina. Esco dalla macchina. Che significa esco dalla macchina? Allora si può correre. Bevo un goccio d'acqua. Un goccio d'acqua. Santiago, una legge approvata per il governo can say that. That means that the law was approved by somebody for the government, meaning to favor the government. So we could say una legge approvata dal governo per il popolo, for the people. So that per would actually tell you who it was approved for, not by. Okay, uscire dalla macchina to get out of the car. So here it's confusing because in English you get out of the car. When in Italian you get out from the car because there's movement from in the car to outside the car, so it's from the car. Let's see, diverso da me. This one will drive you crazy because I told you before that we use a D for comparisons. I've just typed how to say a sip of water. Un goccio d'acqua, si, si Jane. Okay, diverso da me, somebody different from me. I'm not saying that he's different, he's different than me, in which case I would use D, but he's different from me. Yeah, he's different from me. Esatto. So there's a difference between being different than me, you can't even say that, different than me, he's different than me. I don't know, but yeah, it's from me. And here's the very common usage of da, that you should be getting right even as a beginner and you are some most of the times you're not and it's when we use a verb of movement but we are moving towards people so dal meccanico it doesn't mean it can mean from the mechanic in a sentence for example i have just come back from the mechanic then in that case dal meccanico would mean from the mechanic but if i say vado dal meccanico that means i'm going to the mechanic this is the most confusing usage of da, in my opinion, because it's the opposite of what you mean, or what you think. The other ones you can get, this one is just the opposite. But it's so common. So da meccanico can mean to the mechanic. It's also used like the French che. So, if you know French, you know when you say chez moi, that means in my house. So, da is also used to mean where something is happening at. So, da Marco means at Marco's. Stasera andiamo da Marco. Stasera ceniamo da Marco. Tonight we're having dinner at Marco's. This is very different from what you would think in English. Vado da Manu, yes, per Sassia means I'm going to Manu's. 
is after. Here's another big usage of that that it's quite different. And it's used to, to say, again, here it translates with a sentence. That bambino means when I was a child. So as a child in English, we'd say. We use as in English. That studente, when I was a student, or as a student. So it's used usually with the imperfetto tense, which as a beginner you wouldn't know, but as an, as an intermediate student you do. So da bambino non mangiavo la frutta. As a child I didn't eat fruit. Da, studan da studente ero povero. As a student I was broke. Okay, so here's a usage that it's a little bit different. Martin, vado al ristorante da Mario. If you mean that you're going to Mario's restaurant, then yes. Here's a, another very common usage of da that is really, really hard to understand and it was pretty hard for me to explain. <laughs> Again, it replaces a phrase. When I say abito da sera, what that da means is that the first noun is suitable or is used for the second noun. Let's try. I have a few. See if you can give me the meaning. I'm... I can see that I'm all choppy. Sorry for that. Abito da sera. Abito means dress and sera means evening. So how would you say that in English? Abito da sera. Is that Alice or Alice? It's an evening dress. You can't say that in Italian because evening is a noun and dress is a noun. Now, how is this different from a chocolate egg, because in, in, in your English mind, you are going to think English, sorry, chocolate egg, evening dress, same thing, isn't it? Same structure, but it's different. The chocolate egg, the egg is made of chocolate, whereas here, the dress is not made of evening. Do you see the difference? So, because the dress is not made of, of evening, it's made for the evening, the preposition is da. I'm, I'm going to show you a bunch of more examples because this is the most common different usage of da, and I want you to get this one right. Costume da bagno. So, what does it mean, and why are we saying da and not di? Yeah, abito means dress as well. Perfect. So, costume da bagno. Please tell me the meaning, if you know what it means, and why we're saying costume da bagno and not di bagno. There's 179 people watching this. Wow. Come to the chat and ask your questions. That's why we do it live. So, it is a bathing suit or a... Uh, Swimsuit depends which country you're, you're in, obviously. So it's the thing that you swim with or in. But why are we saying costume da bagno and not costume di bagno? Well, because the, the suit, the costume, is not made of swimming or is not made of but bathing. It's made for bathing. Okay, so that's why it's costume da bagno. If you walk away from this lesson and got this one, I'll be the happiest teacher in the world. I hope I'm doing a good job at explaining it. Yeah, the purpose is to go swimming. Schiuma da barba. Do you know this one? Schiuma da barba. Schiuma is foam. And barba is beard. So, translation and why. Yeah, the swimming trunks. What well, isn't swimming trunks just for boys though? You say swimming trunks for oh you say bikini for a woman. <laughs> Alright, let me see. Gigi, you finally got it. Mwah! I'm so happy. I'm happy that 
GG got it. Aren't you happy that all of you are getting it? So, shaving foam, shaving cream is atto. Why is it schiuma da barba and not schiuma di barba? Well, it's not made of beard. It's made for the beard. Okay? Perfetto, benissimo. So, that is going to happen every time the first noun is used for the second noun. Okay, here's something that we kind of talked about before. It's a phrase, tempo da perdere. I have no time that can be wasted. Time to waste. So in English, they say time to waste. So why do we put da? It's because I have no time that I can waste. Qualcosa da bere, something to drink, but that's because it's something that I can drink. Qualcosa da, or niente da fare. Oh, I think I've got it next, but niente da fare, nothing to do, but that means nothing that I can do, or nothing for me to do. We're going to use da. So what's the meaning of un film da vedere? Un film da vedere. Ooh, the ladies are coming. There's a huge um, workshop happening in the office. There's going to be 70 people here. I hope they don't get too loud. We're going to wrap it up soon anyway. So what's, um, what's this un film da vedere? It's a must-see film. It's a film that you have to watch. I can't say un film di vedere. You might be tempted to say un film per vedere. It doesn't work in Italian. It's un film da vedere. It's a film that must be watched. So it's, a, it's replacing a whole phrase. Niente da mangiare, nothing to eat, for the same reason. And finally, this one is a little bit different. Ti parlo da amico. I'm talking to you as a friend. So, that's not the first time da means as, or translates as, as in in the quality of. Before we used it for da bambino and da studente, meaning when I was a student, when I was a child, so as a child, as in in the quality of a child in a certain way. So don't use it when as for comparisons and stuff like that, okay? Perfetto. Uh, Allora, ragazzi, was this useful? Uh, bravissimi! I keep an eye on the chat uh, while I'm doing this, and I can see that your participation is amazing. Your translations are pretty much always spot on. Now, confused beetle. Da amico implies from a friend? No. Ti parlo da amico means I'm talking to you in as a friend. I'm talking to you as your friend. I'm speaking as a friend. Perfetto? Benissimo. Allora. Henry, grazie mille. Grazie a tutti. I know it's a huge lesson. It would be great if somebody could do a PDF of it. I'm kidding. I'm not asking you this, but... These are long lessons and I know they're super engaging for you while you're live. I'm just concerned that that might be too long when people watch it as a video, but it takes commitment to learn a language. So I know that you, 194 people, are committed because you are investing 40 minutes of your time to perfect your Italian. If this was a three minute video, one, I could not have covered all these cases. I could not have interacted with you and your brain wouldn't remember. That's the most important thing. Your brain would not remember. Grazie mille, okay. Um, PJ, quickly, why is it that often used with rules? For example, um, stanza da bagno. Well, because it's a room that is used for toiletry, <laughs> for camera da letto. It's a room that is used for sleeping. 
So he replaces a phrase again. Ciao a tutti, c'è anche qualcuno dal Giappone. Ciao a tutti. Allora, grazie mille. È un piacere stare con voi. If you're watching the recording of this and you got to the end of this, please subscribe because that, mean, that means that you like this. And share the love. I share my love. You share your love by liking, subscribing, sharing. Grazie mille ragazzi. Un bacione, ci vediamo domani per un'altra lezione. Go to italymedeasy.com slash live to check the calendar of events. Ciao ciao!